Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review and today we're taking a look at this brand new line of action figures that's called Combatants Fight for Glory by Zesray Studios. I'm not really sure if that's how you say it, I'm probably butchering it, but it's spelled X-E-S-R-A-Y Studio. And I don't know too much about this company. I don't know too much about this line or anything. I just saw these things pop up like two weeks ago. I saw some pictures posted. I think I saw Dork Lair talk talking about them. And they looked really interesting. I thought they'd be fun to put along with Mythic Legions. And then next thing you know, my boy Toy Fiend on Instagram had them for sale. So I figured, why not? A new action figure line. Let's check it out. And I mean, so far, these things look badass. So I'm excited to talk about them. I decided to do one video for all three of them because it looks like they all share the exact same body and it's basically just a couple of different pieces like the lower legs are different the heads are different obviously and then the paint jobs and the accessories and stuff like that but for the most part at its core they're all the same figures so I figured let's do it in one video but let's go ahead and get into it starting with the packaging the packaging is collector friendly you are able to take the figures out and put them back in as you please and they do look really cool I feel like they have an old school kind of vibe to them it, it kind of feels similar to mythic legions in the packaging style too you know you have this plastic piece that comes off and then you you know just a cardboard backing but i like the way it looks man let's take a look at the sides of each of these as you can see we get a shot of the figures and they all look really badass so they got a good photographer doing his thing over there but same thing on the back we get a look at each one of the figures on each one of their boxes and one thing i really appreciate about these figures is check out these long ass bios <laughs> that they gave each one of these characters i'm not going to sit here and read them but they're pretty cool like for the most part, they're kind of like generic, you know, gladiator-esque biographies, but they're pretty cool. And there's some like world building, like apparently this dude here has some beef with this guy here. So that's kind of cool. One other thing I really like about the biographies is they mention characters that we don't have. And it kind of makes you wonder like, who is that? You know, like the name Victor pops up in a couple of these biographies and it's like, who the hell's Victor? Do I have that figure? What's going on? He, he sounds like a badass, but <laughs> Victor's not in this set. Maybe he's like in a future set or something on the opposite side. It gives us like some general information about like the line, you know, so that's pretty cool too. So once again, there's a lot of information on these, on the packaging for these figures. So I could definitely appreciate that. I think that's really dope, but enough about the packaging. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these figures. Okay. So here we have all three of these guys right out of the packaging. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect with these figures, because as I said, I've never heard of this company. I don't own any of their toys or anything. So I wasn't really sure what these figures were going to be all about, but I will say that I'm really impressed with them. And I really like what's going on here. I was a little thrown off because originally when I saw the promo image, of these figures I thought the skin was gonna be like storm collectible style where it's like rubbery you know but that's not the case it's basically just your traditional solid plastic and that's okay but when you look at them they definitely look like the skin is going to be softer or something and i actually had a lot of people ask me what the skin like felt like because i think a lot of people assumed it was going to be very similar to storm collectibles but you know like i said that's not the case and it's perfectly fine i still think they are awesome figures but the soft skin uh, approach would have been interesting for sure but i do definitely like what we have going on here as you can see all three of these figures share the exact same same base body except for the hyena over here he actually has a uh, chain mail covered arm and that's the only difference between him and the other ones but he does come with an interchangeable arm so you could plug this arm in there and then he has the exact same base body as the other guys and i assume that you could probably plug this chain mail arm into one of these other figures because i think that's the whole like the big draw here is that there's a lot of customizing potential because all these armor pieces that you see you could swap them between the figures i think that is so dope that's a lot of fun and you could just come up with your own characters you know that'd be fun to make up your own warrior out of these pieces and most of the armor is very easy to remove like all the armor on the upper body comes off with no problem but on the lower body like on the lower legs here these shin guards are on there really really tight so if you want to remove those things you're going to need a lot of hot water or a blow dryer or whichever method you choose when it comes to stuff like that but yeah these things are removable it's just going to take some work but still i love the idea that you could remove these things and switch them between the three figures that's so cool but uh yeah look at these man these things look really really good every single one of them has like an amazing sculpt obviously the bodies look good because they're very muscular there's a lot of good articulation in there and they're just a good base body and then you have all these incredibly well sculpted armor pieces and you throw them on those like good looking base bodies and then you know you've got an awesome looking figure so yeah check out these guys and we're going to take a closer look at each one of them in just a second here but i just wanted to give you a good look at you know the way all three of them kind of look next to each other 
and yeah these are dope man and a little bit later in the video i'm gonna do some like swapping with all the armor and stuff like that but it does take work because like i said you know some of the joints and some of the armor pieces are very hard to remove in fact for his arm I, like i couldn't get that shit off I, I used a bunch of hot water i mean eventually i got it but it was really hard uh, i kind of wish that the arm was easier to plug in and out you know so i'm probably gonna like try to cut the hole out a little bit and make it bigger or something like that but yeah it was really hard to remove that arm but anyways let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at all the details and we're gonna go ahead and start off with the reaper okay so here we have the reaper and i'm not going to give you the whole character biography or anything like that i'm going to save that for you in case you want to buy these figures you could enjoy reading that but i will say one interesting thing they say about this guy is that when he comes out and fights he doesn't care about like the fanfare or like uh you know chanting to the crowd or participating with the crowd you know like some gladiators like to come out and go you know do crazy shit interact with the crowd he doesn't do any of that he comes out he kills it and then he goes back inside so that must be why they call him the reaper but anyways i think this is a good looking figure i like this head sculpt he definitely looks like a no nonsense uh angry kind of guy he's got a little beard going so that's cool and the beard is actually sculpted it's not just painted on there so that's awesome i like the way his eyes look <laughs> it looks kind of creepy and we've got a scar right there on his face the hair is well sculpted there's not a whole lot of paint detail in it it's basically just brown then moving on to the body the body looks good. We've got some good muscle sculpting work on here. And I like how the color is different from the other light-skinned uh, gladiator guy, Mr. Hellfish over here, or Devilfish. <laughs> Hellfish. But yeah, I like how the skin tones are different. I think that's cool. But yeah, that all looks good. And then we've got like his uh, little forearm guard that looks nice. And it does have like somewhat of a metallic look. But, uh, you know, not so much. It doesn't look like realistic or anything, but it, it looks better than just cheap plastic. So I can appreciate that. And then on this side, it's just like the arm wrap. So that's dope. Then we have some straps that look good. We've had some uh, buckles, a little ring in there. What's going on in the back? Nothing too much. But look at all the detail on there. That's nice. Oh, and then look right here. We've got some tattoos on his back. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have this armor here that looks really good too. This also has like a kind of a metallic look and it's very well sculpted. Look at all that. And like I said, these are loose pieces so you could remove them, but they look really good. And then onto his little uh, apron thing here. We've got some like leather belt looking sculpt work with some uh, buckles and some rivets. And look at the cloth detail on here. That looks nice. You can see all the cloth like texture to it. So that's dope. And I like how this just kind of looks like a ripped, like, torn piece of cloth that he just kind of wrapped around himself. <laughs> then on the back, we have a, a sheath. The sheath works very well, too. You could just stick his sword in there. And we'll take a closer look at all his weapons in a minute here. But I like the way the sheath rotates. You could kind of move it around. So you could have his sword in different directions. I think that's awesome. And then moving down to the lower legs. Check out these shin guards. Look at the details on these things. That is really, really nice. And these look good, man. I, I like the way these things look a lot. We have some like metallic paintwork, some gold paintwork. Look at all that stuff. They put a lot of uh, a lot of work into these shin guards. <laughs> That's cool, man. And then you move down to the feet, and then there's not too much going on. Check out the toes. <laughs> you know, they look like toes, but I don't know. The feet kind of stood out to me as not looking as good as the rest of the figure. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But yeah, these shin guards are awesome. And yeah, this is a good looking figure. I think, uh, I think he's dope. And as for accessories, the Reaper does come with a lot of cool stuff. First off, we have these two different swords. One of them is like a traditional kind of sword. And then the other one has this crazy angle in it. And I think that looks pretty dope. And then he also comes with the shield and a helmet that goes over his head. And let's take a closer look at the helmet and the shield, starting off with the helmet. Look at this thing. This kind of adds to his, uh, Reaper nickname, you know? But look at that. That's dope. I like how you can't see any of his face at all. And then, ooh, look at that. Oh, man, that's awesome. Then we have some wings on the back here. I love this dude's armor. This is really, really cool. And what do we have up here? Oh, shit, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's kind of hard to see what that is when you're just looking at it. But now that I'm zoomed in on the camera, that shit is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's dope. And it comes right off the head with no problem at all. And you could obviously put that onto the other characters. Here it is on uh, Devilfish. 
but we'll uh, we'll do some armor swapping a little bit later. And then we have his shield. And look at the detail on that. I love the gold there in the center. Really, really nice. Look at that. And it does have straps on the inside, and he is able to hold it. It's a little hard to get him to grip it with his hand. But, you know, if you work it around, you can make it happen. So that's nice. And then check out, there's even some texture detail on the inside of the shield. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so the accessories are, are really, really nice for, for this guy. And then next up, we have this guy that goes by the name of Hyena. And they call him that because he's a little bit more agile than your average gladiator. He also likes to creep up behind people and stab him in the back. And apparently, his, this guy has some beef with this guy's like tribe or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of world building in there. But this figure does look really nice. I like that facial expression. Check that out. It looks kind of creepy. It looks good like that. But once you bring his head up, his eyes look kind of weird. So they have him to wear like... You have to have his head down to make it look like natural, you know, but it does look cool. It looks very intimidating, so I do like that a lot. We've got a tattoo on his shoulder that it's an actual hyena. <laughs> I just noticed that. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then we have some straps going on. And like I said before, same body. Looks good here, too. Then we have the skirt that looks pretty nice, too. This one ha actually has, like, some armor pieces, and it looks a little bit more... Uh, I guess professional than the other one. Like this guy is kind of just looks like a piece of cloth just kind of strapped around him. This one here looks like official gladiator attire. <laughs> so that's dope. We got a, a couple like spikes or whatever on the side here. Got these things hanging down. And then on the arm, we have this here. Oh, it looks like these two pieces are the same. Okay, so we have some reuse there, but that's okay. They're, the colors are different, so that's cool. And then moving down in here again, the the shin guards look really nice. Not as detailed as the previous figure, but they do look really good. And he only has one shin guard. But uh, yeah, it does look nice. Let's see what we have going on back here. Not too much going on. And then there's the chainmail arm that looks cool. So yeah, this is a good looking figure too. I especially like that face sculpt. It looks pretty uh, creepy. Or not creepy, but he, he definitely looks like... He could uh, tear some shit up. So that's dope. I like this one. And Hyena also comes with a really good amount of accessories. First off, we have his weapons. We have this really cool looking axe. And then we have a sword. And he also has a helmet that goes over the top of his head. And then he comes with this really big, crazy looking shield. This thing is really dope. And then as I mentioned, he has the interchangeable arm. And taking a closer look at his weapon, starting off with the helmet. The helmet looks good, but it doesn't have as much going on as the Reaper's helmet. And that's just probably because of the design. But I do like the way it looks. I like the way the eye holes look because you could kind of line it up to where you could see his eyes inside of there. Can you guys kind of see him? Not really. But yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. And the sculpted detail is definitely there. And you can see they put a little bit of a wash in there just to give it a little bit of detail and kind of make it look realistic. So that's cool. But I think I prefer the, the Reaper's helmet because that thing is just insane. But this does look good and kind of creepy. So I do like that. His weapons look awesome too. They have like a metallic look to them. So that's dope. But his standout accessory is the shield. Look at this thing. Look at the... I like the details on everything. Like, you know, all these figures have little like characters either carved into their armor or drawn on the shields or whatever. And all that stuff is done really, really well. Check this thing out. Look how clean that is. Really, really awesome. Yeah, I like this shield a lot, man. And once again, it does have the straps on the inside. You could just stick his arm in there. The straps on here are a little tighter, so you don't really need to get him to grip onto the strap in order for it to stay there, to stay in place. So I just kind of stick his arm in there and just kind of let it ride like that. But yeah, this is good. I like that shield a lot. So he does he also comes with some great accessories and I love the interchangeable arm thing. I kind of wish that they all had interchangeable arms. And then last but not least, we have Banthok aka Devilfish, and this guy's whole thing is that he's a part of a group of hunters and I guess he uses what he learns as a hunter inside of the ring. And that's pretty cool. And to be honest with you, I would say that this guy is probably my favorite out of the 3. I think he looks so badass and I really like what they did with the skin because his skin tone looks good and they also added like a wash to it. And it really makes it look a lot better than the other light skinned dude who doesn't have any wash on the muscle definitions. I mean, the Reaper doesn't look bad at all. You know, it's a good looking figure, but you could see that a wash really takes 
um, details to another level. So look at that. I like that a lot. And then aside from that, I really love this head sculpt. Check that out. That is super badass. He's got a really cool looking beard going. He's got the blue eyes. He's got an awesome scar right there on one of his eyes. Yeah, that's a really, really dope head sculpt. So, yeah, I like this figure a lot. I would say that he's my favorite. And then let's check out the armor here. It's got some really cool shoulder armor with some nice detail in there. Look at that. And moving down into here. I like how his armor is a different color than the other guy's armor. That's really dope, too. So that's cool. His armor all looks good. And then his skirt thing looks cool, too. Again, we have some really nice fabric-like details in there. And he's got his metal like belt thing, I guess. He also has a knife sheath in the back. I forgot to mention it, but the hyena dude does not have a knife sheath. So, that kind of sucks. But yeah, Devilfish has it, so that's dope. Moving down to the lower legs. And the sculpting detail looks really good, but it looks like there's a little bit less paint detail. Well, I, I guess they put the same amount of paint detail on here, but the colors kind of blend together. Most of the shin guard and knee pad thing is like a dark silver, and then the details are kind of highlighted with the light silver. So that is pretty cool, but it, you know, doing that, having these colors so close, I almost couldn't tell that that stuff was painted. You know what I mean? I kind of had to look at it twice, um, as opposed to Reaper, who has the darker silver and then the gold, which makes all those details come out a little bit more. But it still looks really good. And yeah, this is dope, man. I like this. But yeah, I think the the strong point for this figure is definitely the skin tone and that head sculpt. Look at that. And Devilfish doesn't come with quite as many accessories as the other two figures, but he does come with some cool stuff. First off, we have this dagger type of knife. And then he has this crazy spear thing, I guess you could call it. That kind of goes with this hunting persona, so that's cool. And then last but not least, he comes with a net, which is interesting i mean that's cool that they would give him a net given his little character biography but uh yeah i'm kind of surprised that he doesn't have a helmet or a shield or any of that um and, and they kind of give us a reason in the biography you know his people don't like that kind of stuff so it, it is what it is but i wish they would have given him just a little bit more um because yeah he kind of he kind of is the weak link in terms of accessories when it comes to comparing them to the other figures. And now for a couple of quick size comparisons, we have Devilfish alongside a Mythic Legion's Krona figure. I think that's how you pronounce it. And on the opposite side of him, we have the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Marvel Legends Boar. And that is a badass figure. I haven't messed with him in a couple of years, but I forgot how cool he was. Next up, we have Reaper alongside a Mythic Legion's Balam and the Marvel Legends Ares from the Thor Ragnarok wave. And then next up, we have Hyena alongside the Marvel Legends Better Ray Bill and the Marvel Select Disney Store exclusive Thor. And then here we have Devilfish alongside a Mythic Legions Ogre and the Marvel Legends Comic-Con exclusive Ulick. Once again, that's another figure that I forgot how cool it was, so I'm glad I had a chance to bust him out again. And then here we have Reaper alongside the Mythic Legions Faunus and the Mythic Legions Shadow Elf. And then here we have Hyena alongside the NECA Ahab Predator figure and the 80th Anniversary Marvel Legends Thor. And then last but not least, we're going to have Devilfish hang out with the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man and Marvel Legends Bucky Cat. So I know this kind of looks weird, but check this out. As I was taking off all the armor pieces, I realized that you could pop the figures right at the mid torso and then you're able to take off the skirt pieces. So once you do that, these guys are like a perfect blank body to use for customs. So that is really, really dope. And I will say though, I did have some trouble taking off the feet and I actually broke this guy, but I'm not gonna blame the figure. I'm just a dumbass because I, I pulled it off without heating it up and the peg just broke. And I kind of thought like it would work because on the hyena over here, I was able to pop his feet out without any problem. And then I went and tried it with uh, the Reaper and I actually broke the peg. But after a little bit of work, I was able to fix it. And now I have it to where it pops on and off without any problem. So that's kind of cool. That's one upside to the peg breaking. And I might go ahead and modify all the pegs on the feet just so that I could pop them in and out without uh, too much of a problem. That way I could switch the armor around as I please. But yeah, this is pretty interesting. You could definitely make a really good custom out of this base body. And I was actually thinking of ordering an extra one of these guys so that I could try to make a uh, gladiator figure from uh, the Shi'ar Empire. I think that would be dope because I never liked the Marvel Legends one. And I was really excited to have that figure because I love that character, but the figure just didn't do it for me. So I think this body would work really good for that or any other like really muscular 
um, Superman type of character. So yeah, that's definitely another appeal about these figures that they're perfect for customs. Yes, you know, paying for a $60 uh, base body for a custom is kind of crazy, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. You could definitely make something unique for your Marvel Legends or six inch collection using one of these bodies. So uh, yeah, that's dope. And here's a look at the three figures with the armor swapped between the three figures. And I really, really like this. I love the fact that this is possible with these guys. I think that's my favorite aspect about these figures is that you could customize like this because just with a little bit of work, I feel like I have three completely different brand new characters so i think that is really really cool but i will say once more that if you're going to try to remove the lower shin guards you're going to want to heat up the ankle area a lot before trying to pull those things off because you know they could break like i did with my reaper figure and you know what's kind of cool i contacted the people that made these figures and asked them if i could buy a replacement ankle for reaper and they're going to see what they could do for me. They were really nice. I even told them that it was my fault and everything, and I was mishandling the figure. I should have been more careful. Uh, but yeah, they're going to try to hook me up with the new ankle piece. So that is awesome. You know, the dude seems really cool that was working on these. Um, he seems to be very proud of this line, and he should be because these things are badass. But uh, I really, really like the fact that you could do this with these figures. That adds a lot to the fun factor. You just have to be careful. And that's one thing I kind of wish was a little bit different. I wish it was easier to take apart these figures so you could do this kind of stuff. But still, it's possible, you just have to be careful. And then for the articulation, I went ahead and kept off all of the armor pieces so that we could get a good sense of what all these joints are able to do. And I think for the most part, the articulation setup is really nice, but there are a couple of things that I feel are missing. But overall, I think they did a pretty good job with the articulation setup here. But let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the head. It does move side to side. We get a little bit of tilt. So that's cool. They could look up to about right there, and then they could look down to about right there. And then he does have a diaphragm cut, but he doesn't have any waist swivel, and that was kind of surprising, but it's okay because you are able to swivel at that diaphragm cut, so, you know, that kind of takes care of that. And then you can go side to side. He could go back to about right there, and then you could bring it forward to about right there. And this is very similar to like a Marvel Select joint. So, you know, if you think about something like the PS4 Spider-Man uh, torso setup, how we were able to like increase the articulation by just popping it apart and chipping away at it, you could probably do something very similar with this. But, you know, as is, he has some pretty decent range right there in the torso. So that's pretty good. And then the arms are pretty interesting because they have a very similar setup to something like figure arts, or at least in the shoulder area that's the case, not the rest of the arm because he does have a single jointed elbow. But the shoulder's pretty crazy, so it can go all the way around. There we go. And it doesn't have any upper bicep swivel, but you actually get some swivel right at the shoulder joint, just like a figure arts figure. So that's pretty interesting. I like that a lot, and it doesn't break up the sculpt, it keeps the arm looking good, and you still get some pretty good movement out of it, you know, you could do some stuff with that, kind of bring them forward, make them look a little bit more intimidating, you know, so that's cool. I like that joint, and then of course it could go all the way around, it could come out to the side, he has single jointed elbows, which get a nice bend, they get a little bit more than 90, so that's pretty cool, and then you also have a swivel right there at the elbow. At the wrist, you have a little ball joint, so you can move it all the way around, you could hinge, and then you could swivel at the hand itself. And then for the legs, they are able to come out to the side to about right there, but of course if you have the skirt on him, or the tunic or whatever, it's definitely going to get in the way a little bit, but you know, it's a loose piece, so it'll probably shift out of the way as you bring his legs up. And then you could bring him up to right here, which is pretty cool. You could bring him back to about right there. So the hip joint is very similar to the shoulder joint, you're going to have a little bit of swivel in there. The upper thigh kind of rotates on that hip joint, so that's cool. That works. And then it doesn't break up the sculpt at all right here on the leg, so, you know, that's all right. I mean, obviously, I prefer, like, a traditional, like, upper thigh swivel somewhere in there because you could do a little bit more with it, but at least how they did it here, there's, there's some decent range, so you could definitely get things going. And then he does have double-jointed knees. Oh, and I just realized that all the pegs are covered. That's awesome. I love when companies do that. Same thing up here in the arms, you know, that's really dope. Anyways, down here at the lower leg, we have a swivel at the ankle. His foot could go forward to about right there. It could come up to right there. And then we have rocking ankles. So the articulation on these figures is actually really nice. And 
especially for such like muscular uh, characters, you know, you could definitely do a lot with them. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the articulation setup. All right, guys. So overall, I'm very happy to say that these figures are really, really nice. And I'm really happy that I went ahead and took a chance on them. Because as I said at the beginning, I don't know anything about this company. I've never purchased anything from them before. I don't even know if they have any other products. So I just took a chance on these guys. They cost me about 60 bucks, which $60 each, which isn't like that expensive but it's kind of a lot to just kind of buy something that you don't know nothing about you know so all three of them cost me like over 150 dollars so i wasn't really sure what i was getting into but like i said i'm really happy that i picked them up because these things are really nice i especially like all the sculpted details on them i love all the armor pieces all of the weapons are really cool the articulation is pretty good i mean it's not amazing but i think it's enough for um, these guys and you could definitely get them into some really cool poses so I'm happy about that and I really like the fact that you could switch around the armor I do wish that it was a little easier to deal with because with the lower legs to be honest with you I don't think that these figures were designed to have the shin guards be removable even though they're separate pieces those feet have a lot of trouble coming off so if you're gonna want to take those off you want to heat those up I can't stress it enough because I don't want you to break your toys like I did so be very careful heat those things up before you try to get the shin guards off but I like that the shin guards could come off I just wish that they made it easier to deal with but aside from that all the other armor pieces are um, very easy to take off and to deal with so that's awesome I just wish the feet were the same way you know but I think that's really cool of these figures and I really look forward to buying more figures from this company it's gonna be cool seeing other armor pieces that come with other figures that I could put onto these guys that's gonna be a lot of fun so yeah these are cool man I'm very happy with them and a huge shout out to toy fiend on Instagram aka the toy Empire that's where I got these from uh, he always has the he always has these kind of things you know he's always stocking like off the wall kind of action figures and that's where I buy like a lot of the stuff that I can't find somewhere else so so shout out to toy fiend but yeah anyways i think that's it thank you so much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff and thank you very much peace